द वे फॉरवर्ड इज थोड़ा बहुत बहुत स्वागत है मैं थोड़ा होस्ट हरजोत सिंह असी हाले भी इस मुल्क नवे हाँ इस करके इस मुल्क के इतिहास को जानना समझना साढ़े वास्ते बहुत जरूरी है इस मुल्क के इतिहास न एक बहुत एक जरा एक एलीमेंट जुड़िया होया है वो हैगा रेस का रेसिजम का और एक ब्लैक स्पॉट इज द हिस्टरी स्लेवरी का अज असी गल करा सरदार जयदीप सिंह जी नाल जो कि रेस न और रिलीजियस बायस न कंटेंपरी पॉलिटिक्स पढ़ते हैं समझते हैं वो एक हिस्टोरीयन है कैलीफोर्निया स्टेट यूनिवर्सिटी उन्होंने पहल सर्व किया और अज साडे नो जी इस स्लेवरी की बैकग्राउंड है रेसिजम की बैकग्राउंड है और अज की डेट में वो किमें साड़ी लाइफ को इन्फ्लुएंस करती है इस कंट्री उस बारे गल करा जयदीप जी वेलकम टू द वे फॉरवर्ड Satsikal ji thank you for having me and I really appreciate the opportunity to discuss such a salient topic at this time in American history and uh I I I just want to apologize to everybody my Punjabi is pretty bad I migrated to this country in 1972 at the age of 3 and unfortunately my parents didn't well maybe fortunately I didn't I came here I didn't speak English and so I had to learn quickly and so my parents made a decision to make sure that I spoke English and so i apologize that my presentation today will be in english jaydeep ji no need to apologize as he as he samajhde hain this is our uh, new reality this is a reality we have to accept and live with uh, jaydeep ji the topic uh, that we are discussing today racism slavery it's a very important topic uh, you know uh, some people argue that uh, slavery is a thing of the past it it is something that uh, you know this country has left behind uh from time to time we see that you know uh, 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 the the impressions from those times come and haunt us again i don't think that we have completely left it behind <coughs> but sadi community nu e janna bahut zaruri hai ki aaj di date vich jo jo uh, you know jo freedoms jo success assi is country vich enjoy karde ha jo comforts assi enjoy karde ha ओ असी इन एफ्रीकन अमेरिकनस की जी स्ट्रगल हैगी है जेडे उन्होंने सैक्रीफाइस हैं उन्होंने उपर वो साड़ी अज की जी फ्रीडम्स हैं सा वेरी एगजिस्टेंस इन दिस कंट्री उस दे उपर बेस्ड है इज दैट इज दैट फेयर टू से एबसोल्युटली बिकॉज द रियलिटी इज एफ्रीकन अमेरिकन वर द फर्स्ट लार्ज ग्रुप टू लिव अमंग द न्यूली क्रिएटेड वाइट सोसाइटी इन दिस कंट्री दैट वाज क्रिएटेड इन द 1770स जी एंड every form of degradation that could possibly be heaped on human beings has been suffered by african americans in this country <laughs> now because they fought for generations and generations against this we as recent arrivals have become the beneficiaries of african americans blood sweat tears and <laughs> sacrificing their lives <laughs> they are our shaheeds and yet we don't realize it that every day the freedoms we have are specifically because of what african americans have done in the courts in the streets in the classrooms everywhere in the, you know as scientists as builders jaydeep ji assi tod nal is bare hor detail ch gal karange but sab to pehla jehdi aaj sab to first thing we want to address the question i have for you is this is race a biological fact or is it a social construct you know construct or even a political construct is it a biological fact it is not race is basically a very simple thing it's a form of categorizing human beings based on completely arbitrary aspects of their appearance so we refer to this scholar as phenotype your appearance that's all race is there's nothing biological about it there's nothing scientific about it what it is is a very important social construct it has a very political very important political function race is a form of social hierarchy like caste it tells you who is at the top who's at the bottom and who's in every area in between it's a social hierarchy it's mapped onto human bodies and it's enforced by coercion meaning the law the police meaning if you move out of your neighborhood people are going to put you back into it and also by ideology and that ideology is white supremacy you know uh, jaydeep ji 
ਇਟਸ 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 ਵੈਰੀ ਇੰਟਰਸਟਿੰਗ ਅਸੀਂ ਦੇਖਦੇ ਆ 2000 ਸਾਲ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਵੀ ਯੂ نو ਵੈਨ ਵੈਨ ਸਮ ਗ੍ਰੀਕ ਫਿਲੋਸਫਰਸ ਆਰ ਰਾਈਟਿੰਗ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਦ ਅਫਰੀਕਨਸ ਦੇ ਡੋਨਟ ਕਾਲ ਥੈਮ ਪੀਪਲ ਫਰਮ ਸਮ ਅਦਰ ਰੇਸ ਦੇ ਜਸਟ ਸੇ ਕਿ ਪੀਪਲ ਫਰਮ ਥੈਟ ਪਲੇਸ ਹੈਵ ਅ ਡਾਰਕਰ ਸਕਿਨ ਆਈ ਆਈ ਡੋਨਟ نو ਹਾਊ ਇਜ਼ ਇਟ ਥੈਟ ਯੂ نو ਓਵਰ ਦ ਪੀਰੀਅਡ ਆਫ ਟਾਈਮ ਇਟ ਬੀਕੇਮ ਅ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟ ਰੇਸ ਆਲ ਟੂਗੇਦਰ ਇਜ਼ ਥੇਰ ਸਮ ਹਿਸਟਰੀ ਟੂ ਥੈਟ ਥੈਟ ਕ੍ਰੀਏਸ਼ਨ ਆਫ ਦ ਅਦਰ ਓ ਐਬਸੋਲੂਟਲੀ ਅਮ ਇਟ ਗੋਸ ਬੈਕ ਟੂ ਦ ਹਿਸਟਰੀ ਆਫ ਕੋਲੋਨੀਅਲਿਜ਼ਮ I mean I can talk about it in much more detail in the US later. Gee. But I mean basically think about it this way. If you're going to go to another country, kill the people, rape their women, steal their gold and then make them your servants like the British did in India, it's going to have an effect on people. Right? It's going to mentally uh it's going to affect them that you can see in this country as you look around and you see that all the beautiful and powerful people in this country are white six come to this country and they start to realize very quickly that there is a racial hierarchy my my doctoral dissertation in the 1990s i studied the 1998 cab strike in new york city and i talked to the cab drivers some of them who had just recently gotten off the boeing they had already learned and internalized these very powerful negative stereotypes of black people as they were driving around new york city even before they got to new york city they had these notions of what black people were so these ideas are certainly out there and they affect all of us because where in the world are people the most likely to buy skin lightening cream so they can look you know closer to white well it's it's india and it's been that way for a long time so race has a very you know it has a vast effect on who we are how we perceive ourselves and even how we live our lives Mm. Sorry that was a circuitous answer to your question. <laughs> no you know uh, Jadeep ji I I I wonder you know asi e cheez vekhde ha popularly it said ki jab dekho ji India da ek badi old civilization hai gaya Vedas were written, written a long time back Chinese have had a long very old civilization the Jewish people have had a very old civilization Roman civilization yeah. Africa was the kya janda hai ki uh, you know we don't know if they ever had a civilization just just to show that inferiority and we overlook these facts sade samne e nahi le aaye jande now i have these names which i don't even know if i'm pronouncing them right because i've never heard them um uh, the pharaoh had shipped set from you know 1507 uh, bc she was the most successful pharaoh uh, amongst the egyptians she was a woman mm-hmm. and a, a black woman nefertiti you know as he can they are ki religion jada uh, you know uh, as a organized thought uh was was created in india amongst the jewish people or chinese people uh africa with 1500 saal pehle before christ there is this concept of god the aten uh, amongst uh, you know ancient uh, egyptians we have never heard of that mansa musa uh, in the 12th 13th century is has is known to be one of the richest men ever from 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 africa haven't heard much about that queen uh, nazinga who fought the portuguese from angola again this history we have not heard e kya sade tu by design sade tu dur rakhi gayi hai just to show somebody's inferiority well that's the whole thing we had to have in order for slavery to be justified there had to be a widespread recognition that blacks were inferior and whites were superior mhm And so this is still the basis this this is white superiority this white supremacy to the point where it's it's infiltrated our minds to where the civil you know the birthplace of civilization and of humanity Africa has been painted as some backward area that's where all human beings came from that's where the great ancient kingdoms of Kush of Egypt of Timbuktu of ancient Ethiopia these are all among the oldest civilizations they're right up there with with Sumeria with uh ancient china as well as mohenjo daro mm-hmm. and newer research has shown that equally old civilizations were occurring in central and south america and so this is the whole reality we've internalized we've come to believe white supremacy and that is the surest sign of a colonized people people that have been conquered by other people the other other one is that if you worship a god that doesn't look like you and if you look around the world and you start looking at that you can start seeing where the colonized people were mm mm-hmm. uh jadeep ji uh, you know thanks for giving us some basic idea what we uh, take from this conversation so far is that 
there's, there's nothing uh, called uh, race. You know, by our religion, we are we taught manas ki jat sabe eko pechanbo, treat all human race as one. Uh, I, I don't know how other religions have uh, you know, informed uh, the idea of race, but at least we take this much uh, uh, from the conversation with you that it's not a biological fact a male and a female is a biological fact a dog and a cat is a biological fact different races uh, amongst humans is not a biological fact it's a social construct jaydeep ji asi tode nal is bare gal jari rakhange ek choti ji break de baad tusi vekhte raho the way forward द वे फॉरवर्ड इज थोड़ा फिर तो स्वागत है मैं थोड़ा होस्ट हरजोत सिंह अज असी गल कर रहे हैं यू एस विच रेस की सिलेवरी की जयदीप जी ब्रेक तो जाने पेल सू क्लीयर किया कि जो रेस है ये एक कोई बायोलॉजिकल फैक्ट नहीं है बट सिलेवरी समझ वास्ते एक यूनो एक, एक एस्पैक्ट है जिसनों समझना जरूरी है and uh, i think it has been created uh, you know just to uh, uh, colonialism hai ya slavery hai is nu implement karna se isnu successful karna se this this uh, uh, narrative had to be created main tode tu janna chahanga something which we uh, hear as trans atlantic slave trade sanu please to see that okay can ji. i talk a little bit more about uh, race and what it means and why it's it's developed before we go to the trade Sure. Uh, slave trade. G. G. So G. The, there's a, definitely a reason G. why race is, you know, mapped onto human bodies and why there is an ideology behind it. Hmm. Because even though it's utterly fictive, it determines who has access to the most desirable privileges in society. Hmm. Who gets the best jobs? Who gets to live in the nicest neighborhoods? Who goes to the best schools? And so this utterly fictive concept is also thought to be linked. and this is this is the key here with different differing physical intellectual and moral characteristics and that is the crux G. that's the crux where race and racism can be used to treat people badly and again there's nothing biological about race mm-hmm. because at the genetic level race does not exist G. studies of human dna have found there's more genetic variability between groups i'm sorry between people within a racial group Gee. than within people between two different groups. Gee, gee, so gee, human gee. coloration does tend to vary with latitude, mm-hmm. how close you are to the equator. Mm-hmm. But skin color is not a reliable indicator of biological kinship. Mm-hmm. For example, I'll give you an example. Sub-Saharan Africans are actually more genetically similar to Europeans than to Melanesians in Australia, despite the fact both groups have dark hair and curly skin. But genetically Africans are closer to Europeans. G, G, G. So it's just so, a difference of pigmentation, Hanji. they say, right? Hanji, <laughs> it's just a difference of pigmentation, they say, the pigmentation in the skin. Exactly, but it's not only that. It's 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 arbitrary physical characteristics. The epicanthic fold for East Asians, G. Um, curly hair for Africans, straight hair for Europeans, the color of hair and skin and eyes. I mean, these are arbitrary, meaningless things. G. yet we assign so much value to them and that is the crux of race and racism ji 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 uh jaydeep ji let, let's go to slave trade tell us okay ki se gaye trans atlantic slave trade so the slave trade to put it briefly was a way in which europeans mm-hmm. uh essentially took africans ji from africa involving certain members of african nations within the trade and they basically paid for the industrial revolution that way i mean the the wealth that was created it's it, it's mind boggling it's it's astronomical and mm-hmm. i mean i mean i think that's that's one of the main things we have to try to understand when we talk about this is mm-hmm. that slavery of africans it laid the foundation for the modern world economic system not just in the united states not just england the entire world mm-hmm. jaydeep ji uh, we'll uh, you know go uh, deep uh, we'll dive deeper into that later mai mai tode tu eh samajhna chahanga you know it, it, it's it's around 1607 that the first um, you know uh, we have these people arriving from england in jamestown virginia 
right? Around 1607. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a decade after the calm, they uh, uh, bring uh, indentured, uh, uh, you know, they create this indentured servitude. Jede o servants leke aaye, or o servants jede initially o leke aaye, mostly Europe to. Jede othe ladaiye chaldi pesan, unemployment se it's around 1619, I believe, that the first uh, people from, uh, were brought from Africa, right? Yes. And they were kept for 15-20 as indentured uh, you know, servitude. Uh, indentured servitude for our viewers would be like bandwa mazdoor, but not a uh, slave. So this is a transition hai from uh, indentured servitude, bandwa mazduri to slavery. Is the key reason. So that's a really important point. Now, Gee. initially, the big inducement to come to the North America was land. That's it. If there wasn't land, they wouldn't come. Gee. This explains why people from England came to horrible New England with terrible weather and didn't mm -hmm. go to the Bahamas or the Caribbean because the land in those tiny land in those tiny islands quickly ran out. You know, New England, however, and you know the rest of the the colonies had vast inducements of land. So land was what brought them here. Now, uh, oh boy, I'm sorry, I just lost my train of thought. I'm sorry, what were we doing? <laughs> gee, 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 gee. What was no. your question? I'm sorry. No, so, so we were uh, talking here endangered servitude to that's slavery. That's, that's, sorry. Yeah. So now, initially, there was no slavery. Gee. All workers, and again, the, the, the great inducement was land, mm -hmm. but people didn't want to stay as workers. So they quickly, as soon as their indenture ran out, it was four to six years normally you'd be given a, a portion of land. Hmm. Now, the problem was the rich, as they often are, were greedy. And so be, by the 1860s and 1870s, I'm sorry, the 1660s and 1670s, you started to see servants, both black and white, running away together, Gee. having rebellions together. And the biggest one was in, 18, in 1676, Bacon's Rebellion. Now, this many historians point to as the birth of the modern concept of race. So you know, 110 years before, 100 years before the birth of America. Mm -hmm. Basically, it was a rebellion, Bacon's Rebellion, in which black and white indentured servants marauded and rampaged together through the countryside. And the aftermath of this, laws were immediately passed to, to harden the condition, to separate black and white people. Before, they were, they were marrying together, they were working together, they were fighting together. Did the you? ruling class had to end this. And this, and when you started to see a hard and fast notion of white, meaning free, and black meaning slave. And so it was at this point that law started to be passed after Bacon's Rebellion that really started to harden the line where you no longer saw black people as indentured servants. Black eventually came to mean enslaved, while white meant free. Gigi, I girl to emphasize that the viewers have been able to understand that today, 2,000 years ago, when we talked about Egyptian civilization, there were many blacks, many whites, many mixed. It is not a concept, it is a race the concept. Hai. You, you know, people are different, people have different colors, but there is no concept identifying that it is a race. Hai. Udda hi, a jad, uh, initially, a servitude bhi chalda hai, whites bhi hai ge, blacks bhi hai ge, but then something had to be done, something had to happen, which created the difference ki a white hai ge, a, uh, a blacks hai ge, or, or jade blacks hai, unan wo inferior dikhan vaste, just because they just, you know, Rudyard Kipling di, or oh, poem se ge, white man's burden, you have to show ki jada white hai ga, us de kuch, uh, you know, superiority hai ge hai, uh, over the others. Is, is that fair to say? Absolutely. And, you know, when we talk about slavery, we can't, we can't ignore Indians because American Indians were the initially the primary uh, source of income. So basically, they set up all these colonies. You're talking about George, um, Jamestown. Gee. All these colonies that were set up, they were financially a burden. They had to continue to send money and food from the homeland. That defeats the purpose of having a colony. A colony, as in India, is to extract wealth. Mm -hmm. Slavery solved this problem. The early colonists basically sustained themselves through Indian slavery. So that was, this is exactly who they were. It wasn't that they started with blacks. Mm -hmm. Eventually, they depopulated the Indians. And there's another major problem. If you're trying to hold someone a slave on land that's more theirs than yours, mm -hmm. they're going to run away and you won't catch them. And that was increasingly a problem. There was depopulation, the genocidal elimination of entire, entire tribes because of the slave trade. But also the fact that um, Indians could get away and run away. And so 
I mean, slavery really is kind of the basis of what this nation has always been. It wasn't just African slavery that built the United States. Before the United States, when it was a colony, it was Indian slavery that enabled the, the, the maintenance of these colonies. Otherwise, they would have just disappeared into the wilderness again. It was G-G-G. only Indian slavery that made them profitable. G, 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 G. So there, there was like initially 104 people who came, uh, you know, representing a company. So they needed uh, these uh, low uh, paid uh, workers for, for, their, for their, uh, you know, the whole effort to be uh, profitable. That, that, that's the reason behind, right? Yeah, you know, if I could talk for a couple minutes about, Gee. I don't know if this is the time, but I mean, just how dependent European life was on slavery. Gee. So this exploitation dictated the very structure of Euro-American society. Mm-hmm. As I mentioned earlier, slavery of Africans laid the foundation for the modern world economic system. The massive inst- infrastructure required to move 10 million Africans halfway around the world. It built entire cities in England and France like Liverpool, Manchester, Bordeaux. These cities are creations of the slave trade. It was London's emergence as a global center of capital that spurred New York's rise as a center of finance. For every dollar generated by cotton, 40% ended up in New York City. So this is cotton picked by slaves, grown in the South, 40 cents of it for every dollar came to New York City. So New York was very much a product of slavery. And I, and I have a great deal of information we can talk about that later. Jai but Jai I just want to give you just, just some very Jai general Jai stuff. Jai Jai so Jai Northerners, I think Jai it's very important to understand, Jai were deeply implicated in the Southern em- enterprise Jai 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 because of the ship. Hanji. Asiye gal jari rakhange, ek choti ji break de baad. To si vek de ro, the way forward. The way forward is toda fir tu swagat hai. Main toda host Harjot Singh. जयदीप जी ब्रेक से जाने तो पहला सूँ दसना शुरू किया कि न्यूयॉर्क का की रोल रहा है यू नो इस सारे स्लेव ट्रेड एच एक जनरल फीलिंग लोग ही लेंगे न कि भाई जी स्लेवरी है ये कोई साउथ का कोई फिनोमन है नॉर्थ जोड़ा है यू नो दे दे हैव यू नो कैप्टन सेल्स अवे फ्रॉम दिस सू दसोगे की रोल रहा है न्यूयॉर्क का पर्टिकुलरली इस सारे फिनोमन Yeah, so I, I was discussing how Northerners were deeply Gee. implicated in the Southern enterprise of slavery mm-hmm. through shipping, insurance, financing, and you know, for every dollar generated by the Southern cotton, uh, 40 cents ended up in New York City. Gee. The industry to construct, fund, staff, and administer the thousands of ships, which made close to 50,000 individual voyages alone, was an, a Herculean task. I mean, it's, it's mind-boggling. 50,000. thousand individual voyages and again they were all very closely monitored and 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 very very well cataloged because this is this is money right these human beings were property and they kept track of every single piece of their property Gee. now the international financial financial and distribution networks required to coordinate maintain and profit from slavery they set the framework for the modern global economy so what i mean by that is the networks that they used to send the slaves to their various sites was then later used by capitalist organizations by corporations to send other goods so it was slaves that initiated these trade routes hmm. so in that sense you can understand what i mean when i say that slavery launched modern capitalism gg okay it suddenly made the us into the world's wealthiest nation Now the way we t- are taught history in this country is that it was American exceptionalism. Americans are super, you know, supermen. But no. What it was was free African labor and it was the commerce in African human bodies that made America incredibly wealthy in such a short time. Now, talking about complicity, we have this mythology in this country that pretends that the white, ma- you know, that, that that the white um the white planter was evil. and the london merchant right they were evil because they grew rich on the profits of slave labor and that the poor white in the south and the northern small farmer and white workers they were all involved in slavery and did not benefit from it the mythology even suggests that slavery lowered the standard of living of the white masses by holding down their wages okay because if you you can't compete against slave labor right so it's going to depress Free wages labor. hmm So thus it's alleged that slavery was not in the interests of the white masses but that's not true. Hmm. 
Uh, probably the most important scholar, intellectual of the, of the 1900s, of the 1800s, was uh, Karl Marx. Unfortunately, in this country, we don't read him, and thus we don't really understand any criticisms of capitalism. So Karl Marx observed that if you cause slavery to disappear, you will have wiped America off the face, I mean, off the map of nations. Hmm. Now, Marx was actually writing during the low point of the cotton economy in the mid-1800s. But this basic fact is true from the very beginnings of European settlement in America. And I mentioned that earlier, that there would have been no colonies if it wasn't for Indian slavery. Okay, because now, so without slave labor, there would be no America. It's as simple as that. Now, first of all, until the Civil War, the greatest amount of wealth in the U.S. was in the ownership of slaves and of slave labor. When we look in the United States today, where the, the greatest concentrations of wealth, of course, Manhattan, Right, Silicon Valley, Los Angeles. During this time, the richest people in the United States Valley, I mean, in the United States, were in fact in the Mississippi River Valley, a town called Natchez, Mississippi, long since, you know, dilapidated. But you look at the mansions there. It was the Mississippi Valley that was the Silicon Valley of, to, I mean, of that time period. Mm -hmm. So these were the richest Americans. They ran the country. Almost all the first 15 presidents were from the South. So slavery, it was the enterprise of America. It created America, it made them rich, and almost every single person was complicit. So let me talk a little bit about New York City. Now, long before the cotton economy of the South flourished, so this is way before slavery, African slaves built the city of New York. It was their work that enabled the original Dutch settlers, right? You have Bedford Stuyvesant, you have these Dutch names. Those Dutch settlers, uh, it was the work of Africans that enabled the Dutch to be fed and sheltered while they pursued their activities, leisure activities, drinking, gambling, and some fur trading. Africans were not only much of New York's, early New York's farmers, but their carpenters, their blacksmiths, and the city's guards. They did all the work. They built everything. So you were speaking earlier about Africans and the, the lack of skills that we perceive that they have. That's, that's our white supremacy that we've internalized. Hmm. As a matter of fact, Africans were brought from certain areas to the South specifically because of their skills. Uh, I think it was in South Carolina, there were these islands. The skill Africans had in planting rice and raising rice, they were specifically targeted by, uh, by, the, by the slave masters because they wanted people with those skills. So, I mean, that, that's one of the biggest fallacies that these were unskilled people. These were people who came from advanced societies. Hmm. These are ancient societies. They had tremendous skills, woodworking, metalworking. So, I mean, I think I mean, there's a lot of stuff. About, I'm sorry, let me go back to New York. I, I keep getting distracted. So Africans, you know, they did a lot of the early work. Now, the Dutch settlers, they were so dependent on African labor in New York for the basics of life that the governor of the early Dutch colony of New York finally granted some African slaves both freedom and land as long as they'd continue to produce food for the whites. Mm -hmm. Now, the African-owned land in Manhattan at one time included Greenwich Village, Astor Place, and Herald Square. Those mm -hmm. were all black-owned. Now, later, after the Dutch left, the English came, right? The English displaced them. The English settlers, after taking land from the Dutch, they immediately passed laws that banned African land ownership. And so they took these tracts of land from free Africans. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, Manhattan was actually still in twice from oppressed people. Actually, maybe three times, because have you ever heard of Seneca Village? It was a little black, it was a little black, all black village in what is now Central Park. Hmm. When they decided to uh, build Central Park as the city was expanding and moving northward, mm -hmm. they cleared out the black village. So that's three times that just in New York, uh, uh, in Manhattan, that, that the land was stripped from oppressed people. Now, let mm -hmm. me talk a little bit more about African-American skills. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Africans' skills. Their economic skills were a leading reason for their enslavement. Africans possessed unique expertise, which Europeans required to make their colonial ventures successful. For example, Africans knew how to grow and cultivate crops in, in tropical and semi-tropical climates. Hmm. African rice growers were captured in order to bring their agricultural knowledge to America's sea islands mm -hmm. and those of the Caribbean. Many West African civilizations possessed goldsmiths, 
and expert metal workers on a grand scale. And you can see this if you go and look at some of the amazing gold work. Now, this is not a country of jungles and backward people and lions and tigers. Isn't that what racists say about India, too? So I think, you know, Punjabis and Sikhs, we have to be a lot more, I think, astute intellectually and look at the lies that racists so, say about people of color. So, so Jaydeep Ji, let, let, let me ask you this. You know, uh, we know uh, those words by David Hume that, uh, you know, these, these Africans, they are inferior people because they have no government, they have no skills, they have no manufacturing, they have never had all these things in the civilization. So is that a blatant lie? That's what we're talking about. White mm. supremacy is a series of blatant lies. Gee. And it's not only about the superiority of whiteness, mm. but the inferiority of Indians, of Chinese, of blacks, of Native mm. Americans, of Malays. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's the whole notion. Gee. 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 So a couple more things. So many African, as I mentioned, they had goldsmiths and expert metal workers. These slaves were snatched to work in Spanish and Portuguese gold and silver mines throughout Central and South America. Contrary to the myth of unskilled labor, large numbers of Africans were anything but. That's why they were such a profitable and valuable labor force. African labor and African know-how transformed slave economies and slave societies into some of the wealthiest on the planet, funding the growth of global empires. Now, the greatest source of wealth for Imperial France, for example, right? for us it was, it was cotton, for France, it was the white gold of sugars produced by the Africans who were taken to Haiti. More riches flowed to Britain from the slave economy of Jamaica than all of the original 13 colonies combined. That's what I was talking about earlier. Yeah, Jai You have a colony to get money. Jai they Jai got Jai more money out of that tiny island Jamaica than all of the 13 colonies. That's, that's, that's amazing. Jai Ji, main, for our viewers, I would like to ask you again that all the skills that you are saying is that something jo in uh, slaves ne, they picked up while you know working as slaves for these white people or these are the these are skill sets they brought from africa when they were brought here they are very much skill sets they brought from africa but hmm. they also learned a great deal from whites if you go to new orleans today into the french quarter which is the oldest part of the city G. any iron work you see on those balconies those, those lamps, anything you see in the old French Quarter, if it's original, it was made by slaves. Because at that point, so one of the ways, so during slavery, one of the ways in which people could make the most money, I'm sorry, I'm having a little computer mistakes. Uh, my computer came up blind. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. Great. Jadid, I, I'll give you time to adjust that screen. We'll come back after a short break to see Vic Dero, The Way Forward. The way forward is Tawada Firtu Swagat hai, main Tawada host Harjot Singh. Jaydeep Ji, break de duran to see, uh, you know, kuch aise quarters the complicity das rhe sige, which, uh, you know, we don't, uh, you know, generally uh, feel ke, oh, is they which involved honge. You're talking about some universities, you're talking about the founding fathers, some popular presidents. Sanu, please, thoda bistari das sakde ho, saade viewers no? Well, we're talking about white supremacy, and I wanted to give you a quote from a uh, United States president, Theodore Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. He wrote in 1900, quote, the settler and the pioneer have at bottom had justice on their side. This great continent could not have been kept as nothing but a game preserve for squalid savages. So this is exactly the type of language you hear when you talk about blacks and Indians throughout this period. Gee. And you can come even 200 years further to 1900 when the first six started coming here, Mm -hmm. And they said very similar things about six. Six were inferior. Six were dirty. Six were backwards. They said an awful lot about our turbans. The turban was really something racist focused on. Gee. But I think it's important for us as immigrants of color mm -hmm. to understand that this type of thing has been happening to all people of color throughout this nation's history. Mm -hmm. That's the reality of our history in this country. Jaydeep Ji, you said universities the complicity about this. Can you tell us about that? Sure. Uh, well, I mean, can I talk a little bit more before we do about um, uh, basically the deep complicity of people in New York City? Gee. Because, I, I mean, I mentioned how slavery underwrote the Industrial Re Revolution mm -hmm. and the vast improvements in Western Europe's economic infrastructure. Gee. So in that period, the Industrial Revolution is really when Europe moved ahead of Asia in a lot of ways. Gee. 
The reason it did that was the trillions of dollars in slave money. That was the only difference. That was the reason. I think that's the main thing we have to understand is the way the United States and Europe took quantum leaps forward mm -hmm. was out of slave money. Gee, so gee, gee. university. So, I mean, I think one of the things we have to understand is that every single, I mean, I have great details about this, but I want to keep it short. I mean, people like companies like New York Life, mm -hmm. right? It was a minor company until someone had the brilliant idea of taking slaves, which were, it's, it's an inherently dangerous um, venture because if a slave dries, and that can happen in many ways, right? Overwork, you could beat them to death, and of course there's disease. Mm -hmm. If that person dies, then all that investment money is gone. But some brilliant insurance company person was found a way to make it a lot easier for the slave owners to make more and more money and to be less involved, you know, to make it a less risky venture. Mm -hmm. What that did was create incredible wealth in New York City. I mean, people don't realize that in New York City, uh, New York City had the second biggest slave market in the entire continental United States. Gee. That wall of Wall Street was built literally to separate the financial market from the slave market. Mm -hmm. Downtown on Wall Street was where the slave market was. And this was the second biggest slave market in North America. And so slavery was not some type of southern thing. Slavery was all over New York City. Yeah, the, the it first, wasn't just that it was... Gigi, the first state that, leg, uh, that legalized slavery was Massachusetts in 1641. So it's not just a southern uh, phenomenon. Uh, Absolutely. Jaydeep Ji, you know, we, we talk of slavery or as you know, said, it was a bad time. But I think our imagination does not that, uh, go that far to visualize ki what were the excesses against the black people who were held as slaves. Can, can you throw some light on that? Well, yeah, let me, let me put it this way. So Punjabis are generally rural people. Gee. And many of us come from a background in which we have tremendous reliance, not only on the land, but on the animals that, you know, we have on that land. Gee. So could you imagine a human being taking their oxen and beating, beating the oxen until it was dead? Hmm. Right? I mean, it, it couldn't happen, right? Gee. I mean, it's beyond comprehension that a Punjabi would do that, that type Gee. of barbarity. But that was regularly practiced with, with, with slaves. And there's a reason for that barbarity and that brutality and that hmm. violence was because they ran away. Right? Despite all the lies, there's this mythology about how slaves were happy. They were contented. Right? That was, that's what the masters said. If you actually read the master's slave diaries, I mean, mm -hmm. the, the slave master's diaries, they were terrified of a bloody revolt in which someone would cut their throats in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. This was accelerated in 1781 when Haiti was born, the mm -hmm. only country born of a slave rebellion. And from that time on, if you look at even Thomas Jefferson, the letters he wrote to some of his fellow slave owners. They were terrified of what happened in Haiti would happen to them. And slave rebellions happened throughout American history again and again and again. Mm -hmm. And they happened on the slave ships as well. Gee. So this was the understanding. Anyone who had a slave understood that they could wake up in the middle of the night with a blade to their throat. So they did everything they could to make sure that never happened. They wanted to put the fear of God and everything else in between them into their slaves. And so they did it. They did it with brutality, with violence, with sexual violence by separating families, by punishing them in any way they could, the most brutal, barbaric types of torture. But they could get away with it because this person was less than a cow is in Punjab today. Because you can't replace your oxen very easily, but you mm -hmm. can replace slaves. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I know that's a pretty horrific way to make it, I think, plain, but I mean, that's the reality. Anything you could possibly imagine that a human being could do to another person was done. And it was done with no repercussions because they weren't human beings. If you rape someone, you weren't raping a person. That mm -hmm. was your property. If you yeah. cut someone's hand off, there was no repercussion. The law said that was your property. It's like your He-Man doll. You can do whatever you want to it. Yes, yes, yes. Our viewers know that Ki, you know, these uh, people, the black people, people brought from Africa, they were not even treated as full human beings. They were treated as property. You could sell them as property. You could sell and buy them as property. They had no rights, no rights at all. And, you know, uh, Jadid Ji, we have heard a lot about... And they kept them that way. You know, to Ji. keep them that way, if you learn how to read, they'd kill you. If you had a weapon, they'd kill you. If you organized a meeting, they'd kill you. I mean, it's... Right? 
ਜੀ 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 ਔਰ ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਫੇਰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਨਸਟਾਲ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਸੀ ਥਿਸ ਦੇ ਸਟਾਰਟਡ ਰਾਈਟ ਵੈਨ ਦੇ ਸਟਾਰਟਡ ਦ ਯੂ نو ਦ ਜਰਨੀ ਫਰਮ ਅਫਰੀਕਾ ਦੇਰ ਦੇਰ ਯੂ نو ਹੋਰੈਂਡਸ ਸਟੋਰੀਜ਼ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਥੋਸ ਪੈਸੇਜਸ ਐਸ ਵੈਲ ਇਜ਼ ਇਜ਼ ਦੈਟ ਰਾਈਟ ਯਾ ਆਈ ਮੀਨ ਇਟਸ 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 ਮਾਈਂਡ ਬੋਗਲਿੰਗ ਜੀ ਟੂ ਪੁੱਟ ਥੈਟ ਮੈਨੀ ਹਿਊਮਨ ਬੀਇੰਗਸ ਇਨ ਦ ਬਾਟਮ ਆਫ ਅ ਸ਼ਿਪ ਸਿਟਿੰਗ ਇਨ ਥੇਅਰ ਓਨ ਫਿਲਥ there's no bathroom ji so for 2 3 weeks you're sitting in the filth of the people behind you the vomit the filth the sickness when someone died they throw them overboard now one of the most common things that would happen on these ships was slave rebellions mm-hmm. and uh if a rebellion were to occur sometimes the, they would get free but otherwise you know they would throw the bodies over the uh they would throw the bodies over the shore or over the ships and and you know what's crazy is uh the sharks in the atlantic learned to start following slave ships because they knew that these ships would eventually be throwing corpses overboard so throwing you know human property over the side was very much a part of this whole middle passage regardless of the, the weeks of torture that took human lives and drove people crazy mm-hmm. there was also the fact that you know they they also died Gee. and the mortality rate was crazy if they say 15 million they say approximately 15 million people made it to the united states mm-hmm. they say for every african that made it here four or five of them died in the middle passage so that's 60 to 75 million africans that were stolen and um, you know depopulated from the continent of africa ji 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 jadeep ji uh, president lincoln de time a slavery khatam kiti jandi hai uh you think a general koi remorse the feeling hai or there are other reasons for that why why was the slavery abolished across the country well it started in other places england mm. abolished slavery much earlier than we did ji and as a matter of fact i think it was 1775 the year before the united states became a country and that was actually the reason the united states became a country Now remember how I told you how the richest people in the United States were in the south? Mhm. If you're that rich, would you want to leave colonial Britain when you're the richest people in the world almost? Mhm. So the, for the longest time people in the south did not want to fight in the revolution. What mm-hmm. convinced them to fight in the revolution was in 1775 a British court case that outlawed slavery. They believed that they would that the British would then extend that case to uh apply to them. And so out of fear of losing everything they'd built up, they then and only then supported the cause of revolution. So I mean, mm-hmm. slavery was at the basis of almost every single thing. There's there's no remorse, it's not about that, it's about money, it's about capitalism. Capitalism and racism are hand in hand and they're they need each other. Because in capitalism only a tiny minority can do well. So when the vast majority is going to be screwed over, and treated like the cab drivers we see in the streets who are literally suffering and committing suicide because of what's happening with medallions in New York City we have to have a way to distinguish and say these people deserve to be poor these people because they're black we deserve to treat them that way because they're from India or because they're immigrants they deserve to have the worst jobs in this country ji 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 and that's 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 when you start everything starts to make sense because nothing about race makes any sense at all it's it's, it's insane mm-hmm. the shape of my eye should dictate you know or 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 the you know the if i have straight hair should dictate my my mental qualities or my my, my you know how i treat people jaydeep ji jaydeep ji sanu a historical context dasan de vaste thoda bahut bahut shukriya you know sade viewers nu eh samjhan di lod hai ki jo ajj da oh present us dekhde ne aur ajj di jo condition dekhde ne amongst the you know uh, black community is uh, in us us di kuch historical wajah han ਔਰ ਉਹ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਵਜਨ ਉਹ ਯੂ نو 1865 66 ਵਿੱਚ ਖਤਮ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੁੰਦੀਆਂ ਇਹ ਸਲੇਵਰੀ ਦਾ ਜੋ ਆਫਟਰ ਮੈਥ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਰੀਕਨਸਟਰਕਸ਼ਨ ਦਾ ਪੀਰੀਅਡ ਉਹ ਜਿਮ ਕਰੋ ਐਂਡ ਐਵਰੀਥਿੰਗ ਉਸ ਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੀ ਗੱਲ ਕਰਨਾ ਜ਼ਰੂਰੀ ਹੈ ਅੱਜ ਸਮਾਂ ਇਜਾਜ਼ਤ ਨਹੀਂ ਦਿੰਦਾ ਅਸੀਂ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਇਹ ਗੱਲ ਜਾਰੀ ਰੱਖਾਂਗੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਰਿਕੁਐਸਟ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਅਗਲੇ ਹਫਤੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਸਾਡੀ ਡਿਸਕਸ਼ਨ ਹੈ ਇਸ ਨੂੰ ਜਾਰੀ ਰੱਖਾਂਗੇ ਅੱਜ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਗੱਲ ਕਰਨ ਦਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਬਹੁਤ ਸ਼ੁਕਰੀਆ Virgin my pleasure as a matter of fact so let me give you a little bit of preview so mm-hmm. slavery ended in 1861 the civil war ended in 1865 ji mm-hmm. historians of us history and race generally generally agree that the worst time for african americans in us history was 1900 mm-hmm. 
So that's 35 years after the Civil War. And we can Jai talk Ji, about that next Jai Ji, that's very important. That's very important for uh, our viewers to know. Asi uh, e gal jari rakhange agle hafte. Tusi vekte ro the way forward.